Recently, a British tribunal ruled that believing the Bible's claims about men and women is, quote, incompatible with human dignity. They failed to see the irony. For the Colson Center, I'm John Stone Street. This is Breakpoint. In the novel Bleak House, Charles Dickens introduces us to Harold Skimpole, a man who seems charming and reasonable, but is quickly revealed to be a mooch and a parasite. Skimpole lives comfortably off of his friends. Even worse, he comes to believe that he's entitled to the standard of living that his friends provide, giving no thought at all to what it took to make his life comfortable in the first place. Western culture is Skimpole-like. In other words, we take ideas such as freedom and human dignity for granted without ever stopping to think about where those ideas came from in the first place. Just ask Dr. David Macarith, who for 26 years worked for Britain's National Health Service, mostly in accident and emergency wards. By all accounts, he was an excellent doctor. In 2018, Macarith was assigned to Britain's Department for Work and Pensions as a disability assessor. During his training, a senior employee told Macarith and others that they should always address transgender people by their preferred pronoun in line with the department's policy. When Macarith told the senior employee that as a Christian, he could not in good conscience use pronouns that way, he was informed that if he refused to follow the policy, he would be at risk of losing his job. A few days later, when he reiterated he couldn't follow the policy in good conscience, he was fired. Macrath appealed his sacking to an employment tribunal, saying that his rights to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion had been violated. He told the panel that for religious reasons, he could not refer to any six-foot-tall bearded man as a she or a her. He then cited Genesis 127, so God created man in his own image, and the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. Well, given the state of British culture right now, it's not at all surprising that Macarith lost that appeal. What is surprising is just how full skimple-like the tribunal went in its ruling. The tribunal said, and I quote, Belief in Genesis 127, a lack of belief in transgenderism and conscientious objection to transgenderism in our judgment, are incompatible with human dignity and conflict with the fundamental rights of others. This is kind of like finding milk in your supermarket and rejecting that any part at all was played by dairy farmers or cows. The Bible verse cited by Macarath and repudiated by the tribunal is the singular basis for the idea of human dignity and fundamental rights. Without God created man in his own image, the imago Dei, the only dignity anyone possesses is what others are willing to give to them. The truth is, is that had Scripture not introduced the image of God in that verse to the world's lexicon in the first place, the notion of human dignity wouldn't exist. Even raging atheist Friedrich Nietzsche acknowledged that. The ancient world didn't recognize universal human dignity, nor did any philosophy other than Christianity ever even imagine it. Now, I'm not saying, of course, that Christians always lived up to that truth, either personally or within their societies. What I'm saying is, is that no one would have recognized it as truth had Christianity not introduced it and grounded it in some way. Or as another atheist, author, and philosopher Luke Ferry put it in his book, A Brief History of Thought, Christianity was to introduce the notion that men are equal in dignity, an unprecedented idea at the time, and one to which our world owes its entire democratic inheritance. But the history of the idea of human dignity is clear, and it's striking, but it's also ignored in our culture that, like Skimpole, in other words, it never thinks about where the good things of modern life really come from. Christians can serve the world by reminding it of its own history, not least of which because human dignity will never last if it's untethered from the one and only source that ever gave it to the world in the first place. For Breakpoint, I'm John Stone Street.